Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today we're going to start a new project. I'm going to work on the big staging yard that I'm going to be installing underneath of Monroe Yard here on the Piedmont Southern layout. So this is a big project and we're going to start first today with uh, putting down the foam insulation uh, sheets that I use for the sub road bed here on the layout and getting that glued down. And uh, once those are started, I'll show you how I'm pre-building the ladder here on the workbench and then I'll just drop it into place as one big unit uh, once I get everything ready. And then after that, uh, in another video, we will go ahead and install the yard ladder uh, get the wiring done so that everything is pre-wired. Uh, I think at that point we'll install the switch machines that go to each one of these uh, turnouts, and there are eight turnouts in the yard ladder. And then after that, we're going to uh, go ahead and build another control panel. And this control panel is something that is very, very different than what I've done in the past. It's going to look very much the same, but there is a special thing uh, that I will be doing. This is something brand new from DCC Concepts that I want to introduce you to. And uh, it has a big wow factor. I mean, when I first saw it, I was blown away with the capabilities of this, uh, of this new development they have. So we'll be putting that into the control panel. And then finally, we'll get everything wired up and give it a test drive. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, so here I am. Uh, this is the staging yard underneath of the main Monroe yard. And what I've got here is the standard half inch uh, foam insulation sheet that I've been using on the layout uh, throughout and also on the modules. And uh, I did a video on that uh, titled, I think, Foam, No Foam, Does It Matter? So if you're interested in the subject of why I use foam, go back and take a look at that. Basically though, what I do is I just take the um, liquid nails for projects and apply it liberally to the top of the half inch plywood that uh, makes up the uh, frame for the layout. And then I'll just spread it out thin using a standard uh, spatula here. These are typically used for drywall work, but it's disposable. So once it gets really gummed up, I can toss it away and buy a new one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. These have been pre-cut. Um, I've slid them down the middle because you need to do that in order to be able to get a full two foot section through here. And these are two feet wide by eight feet long. So I can pull it out uh, in halves and go ahead and I've already pre-marked it. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, I laid out the turnouts here that make up the yard ladder right here. And then I went ahead and uh, uh, outlined those using a red magic marker. So that will uh, give me the locations for the yard ladder. And the, the large yard ladder, as I'll show you, uh, I'm going to put together uh, on the workbench so that it's uh, eight turnout long and all soldered to together. And then I can just apply the adhesive here uh, to the, uh, to the uh, foam uh, sub road bed or to the foam. In this case, it's road bed because I'm, I'm going to be laying my track directly on the foam this time instead of using the cork road bed for that. The reason I'm doing that is this is a hidden staging yard. I want people to be able to hear their trains moving uh, under here. I will have a closed circuit TV cameras set up under here uh, so that people can watch their trains move. But I think it's important that they also be able to hear them. So I don't want it as quiet as it can be. So for that reason, I'm going to stick with the foam over the plywood without any cork road bed for sound deadening effects. So then I'll just, like I said, come back and apply the adhesive on top of the uh, foam uh, in the outlines that I've uh, drawn here. Put the, uh, put the uh, yard ladder in place and let that set up. And then when that's done, I can come back and as you may be able to see here, I've already drawn in the lines for the actual straight yard tracks. So there's eight of those. There's a ninth track back here 
that goes back and connects to the automatic reversing loop that I built in a separate video previously. And I'll put links to both of these videos that I'm referring to, both above me here uh, uh, on the, on the uh, screen and at the end of the video too. So you'll be able to take a look back at those. Um, so right now what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the, uh, pull these pieces of foam out, go ahead, get the, uh, get the liquid nails spread out thin. And then what I have are some pieces of scrap lumber and I can just put these across it to hold it firmly in place while the adhesive dries. And I've got some weights. I've got some, uh, some old plastic one gallon jugs full of water that I set on top of these kind of things. So I've got several of these to do because this is a very long yard. It is 15 feet from this point right here to the end of the yard that way. And it's another seven feet in the other direction. So we've got 22 feet of, uh, of foam to, uh, to glue down or to uh, uh, cement in place. So let me go ahead and uh, get that get stuff out of the way and we'll go ahead and start pulling the foam out. Now I've got everything out of the way. We'll go ahead and I can just lift up these pieces of foam and slide them right out here. Get them out of the way. And we'll go ahead and apply the adhesive. So I'm going to be running in and out of camera here. And uh, I'm on a little uh, roll around stool, so it'll make it a lot easier to get this done. Okay, so now I've got my little putty knife, so let's go at it. Looks like I got it on a bit thin, so let me apply some more here in these gaps. And we'll get that filled in. Okay, so I added a lot more uh, to that. And now I can just fill in these gaps. Okay, that got all of the adhesive applied uh, in a good liberal coat uh, throughout the length of the uh, staging yard area where I'm applying this first panel. So let's slide it back into place. And we'll get that in there. Okay, the first panel's in. Let me go ahead and insert the second suction of this one. There we go. Everybody's in place now. And then I'm just going to rub it real good with my hands to get it firmly in contact with all of that adhesive. Okay. And then we want a really good bond here at the end. So like I said, got my milk jug full of water. Or actually this is an old vinegar jug. And we'll get it installed right over here. And that'll tend to weigh down the sheet of styrofoam over the width of it. And let's get another one down in here somewhere to hold them firmly in place. Like that. And finally one down here at the far end. And make sure those seams are flush. And they are, so that's great. Slide one of those scraps in there. And I have another scrap of sheet of plywood to go down in here. I find these water jugs are a lot easier to work with than using, you know, cinder blocks or anything like that. They're just easier. They've got a nice convenient lifting handle on them, so it makes it much easier. 
So at this point, it's just a matter of letting it set up uh, for a few hours. What I want to do next is let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, process for soldering up the yard ladder in advance. Now that we've got the foam installed uh, for, the, uh, for the staging yard, let's go ahead and uh, do some of the final work here on the yard ladder because I've already soldered most of the pieces together so that really all we're going to need to do is connect the, the bigger pieces together to make one great big one. So first off, let me point out a couple of things. I recently uh, picked up some of these new Walther's uh, rail joiners and they're for code 83 and code 100 both. I wanted to try these out. I guess these are from their new uh, supplier. And right off, I'll tell you that I really like these because, let me zoom in here a little bit. These are great. They are well-made nickel silver uh, preset. There are no sharp edges or anything. And they will slide right onto the end of, the, uh, of a piece of rail like this without any problems. One of the things that always happens to me when I start working with um, with rail joiners is I end up with bleeding fingers from pushing those little sharp edges in there. There are no sharp edges. So they go together quite easily without cutting the day daylights out of your fingers. So I'm going to just get them lined up and see how easily they slide together and it makes a very nice fit. So I'm going to be using these a lot in the future as opposed to the old uh, ones that I previously had which I believe were oh Atlas and just they were just a mix of everybody's uh, rail joiners. So we've got those installed now and they're sitting uh, very nicely there but it right centered on the rail joint itself. Now let me tell you something. Let me share you, with you some things that I do uh, in order to guarantee a uh, good smooth running here. Now first here if we look at the frog on some frogs you will find that when they come out of the package they can be a bit rough and uh, they may not fit perfectly. One thing that often happens is if there's an insert here or any uh, uh, types of rails uh, that make up the frog right here if you look at the frog sometimes you will find little raised areas uh, on the edges and that will cause your rolling stock to bump as it goes through the frog and that can lead to derailments. So what I have here is a 400 grit uh, um, honing uh, stone. It's actually made out of steel and then the, uh, the grit is attached to it. And then what I do is I take this and lay it flat on the um, frog itself and then just do a little bit of buffing or sanding if you will to get it down flush. And in some of these they are perfectly flush right out of the package. In some of them they're a little bit higher. It all depends on the, how the machine was working that day I guess and whether anybody caught it. But at any rate that's something that I suggest to, that you might try. Get yourself a honing stone and uh, check out the tops of your frogs and the rails, those kind of things. The um, these flange ways can use a little bit of a dressing up occasionally too. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is get a hold of one of these NMRA standard gauges. And these have all kinds of little notches and cuts in them. Here's one to look at the track spacing. There's one for wheel spacing. There's one for coupler height. Uh, there's one here for the flange ways to make sure they're properly spaced out. Uh, this has, it just has a lot of different uses and they're fairly inexpensive. And they, they're made by the NMRA or for the NMRA and um, they incorporate a lot of the standards and recommended practices for tracks and wheels and the like. And they're available in various scales. Okay. Now what I like to do then is uh, run these track nibs and these are just little uh, nibs. I don't think you can even see them, maybe not. but. Um, they are set for the proper depth and spacing for wheels rolling on the track. And all you have to do is set it right here on the track like this and run it through the uh, flange ways. Oh, I'm caught on something. And um, that will give you an idea of whether or not, 
So you can see it's moving there fairly easily. Uh, if it doesn't, if you run into a snag, and sometimes you will uh, catch here going through these flanges. And one thing you can do is uh, just take the uh, take a Dremel uh, disc, cutting disc, and you can bring that in, and I'm going to make some noise now, and you can just run that through here and cut back on the width of, or the thickness of the flangeway. I'm going to turn it on and run it through here and show you what I mean. And just give that a couple of shots and that will open up the uh, flangeways if that's a problem for you. Now you can also take uh, very, very small files and file it out as well. So that would that works uh, equally well. As a matter of fact, it's a lot easier to control than with the Dremel tool because they it tends to jump out of the uh, out of the flangeway and catch the top of it at times. But to be honest with you, you won't notice it after it's painted. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and begin work here. Now you'll notice I'm going to show you another piece that I've already worked on. Uh, that has more of the wiring already uh, attached. You can see I have a green and a red wire here. So my green wire is going to the rear rail and the red wire goes to the front rail. So this will be uh, on the aisle side here and I will be attaching this feeder to a, uh, this red feeder will be attached to a main bus wire as will this green one. So basically then uh, that red feeder is going to give power to the outside rail and that's continuous on up through the ladder. But in here we have a problem because there's a gap at every frog here. So this section needs to be powered independent individually. So I have to, I'm going to be installing or I've already installed uh, one of these droppers here or feeders uh, to the inside of this rail here so that it will be powered and I have to do that at each turnout because of this rail gap right here that disrupts it. On this one, you only have to put in a feeder about every six to eight feet uh, in order to provide power up into the, uh, up through the ladder. And uh, I think you'll see that a lot more when I get into doing the actual wiring uh, under the layout when we install these. So let me go ahead, drop this down out of the way again. And you can see here, I also have these, um, I'm going to pull this out. I've also installed the feeders that go to my um, frogs. And again, I've shown you how to do that in the past. There's a little uh, bronze uh, area exposed here on the bottom of the frog. And basically, I just take and file that down, sand it down, flush, and then solder a, a dropper or a feeder right directly to the underside and run that out. Now, these are uh, microengineering turnouts. And of course, this is going to be different with every uh, type of turnout. I'm not sure what the new Walther's turnouts look like. I'll have to take a look at one of those and see if they included a jumper uh, con or a feeder contact uh, on the turnouts like they did uh, on, the, uh, on the double crossover. I think they did. And of course, you know, the Pico turnouts come with a, a wire attached to the frog already. Um, some of the others you will have to add, like the uh, Atlas turnouts, you have to add your feeders to those as well, but they do provide a way of doing that. Uh, this one, it's a little bit more work because you do have to solder a uh, feeder to the underside of that, uh, of, of that uh, frog. And it's a, you know, when you're doing that, make sure you place the, the uh, frog down, the turnout upside down on a good uh, flat, level flat surface and uh, press down so that, the, uh, so that the frog casting won't uh, move out of any alignment when you're doing the soldering. Because it does, you know, heat up the plastic a bit. One of the great things I like about microengineering uh, turnouts, though, is they use a plastic that is a little bit more heat resistant than some of the other manufacturers. So it can take a little bit more heat without softening and running the risk of that uh, frog casting getting out of alignment. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, put this back together and we'll do the soldering work. Like I said, I've already done most of these. There they go. Um, like I said, I've already soldered most of these. There's only two 
uh, connections that uh, still need to be made. So we'll get that done here in a second. Okay, now one more trick. In order to keep this straight and, and perfectly aligned, I take a yardstick like this and put it along the side of this rail going up through the ladder. And that way you guarantee that you're going to get a good straight run up the ladder. And that's about as good as I can get it right there. It's catching on the uh, outside of the spike. So that's in pretty good alignment. Let me get that out of the way now. And then I'm going to take my rosin soldering flux. And again, as always, make sure that you're using a non-acidic uh, soldering flux, a rosin soldering flux. Otherwise, it's going to eat your rails and your wire up over time. I'm going to put just a little bit of, of rosin on the outside here in the web of the uh, the web of this joiner. Okay, so I've got a little bit of uh, rosin flux on there and my solder does contain uh, rosin flux, but because uh, of the temperature and the length of time it takes to heat up these joints, I tend to add a little bit of paste flux uh, to these so that they're going to solder up much faster and you're going to have a much better joint. Okay, so just put a little bit on there and let it flow down into the joiner. And hopefully when that goes in there, you will see it flow through on the other side. Okay, there, that one's done. There. Push them together. And now I'll show you the one on the face here. I'm going to zoom in a bit for this one. and apply the solder and go at it. Okay, and there we have it. Now I mentioned adding these uh, green feeders to the inside here. So what I'm going to do is run this underneath through the gap here in the between the ties and bring that out. And let me show you how I've prepared this. Um, I've already taken this and given a, a little 90 degree dog leg right here and put a little bend in it here at the top. So it's going to sit flush against the side of the rail. And by bending it back just a little bit more like that, it's going to be in firm contact. Let me see if I can give you a, yeah, there you go, a side view of that. And so you can see how it's curved back to fit tightly against the web of the rail. So let me show you how that's going to work. I'll slide that into place so that we can do the soldering. Pull it up. And I've already added a bit of solder to that, as you could see. So I've got that in place. Let's go ahead and solder it against the web of the rail. Give it a good... There we go. And you can feel it as soon as the solder melts. The, uh, if you just tug a little bit on the uh, feeder, it'll pull it right into there and give it a nice tight fit against the web of the rail. Okay, let's let that cool a second. And it's very, very tight. That's not going to come out of there no matter what. Now, I don't need to add one of the red feeders at this point because I've got one about on the next turnout up. So that's all for this one. I'm going to go ahead and move it up and we'll do the next one. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other one real quick. I'm going to go ahead and bend this guy to create the little dog leg and bend him back so that he's going to be up against that, the web of the rail there. And then we'll bring our solder in here and going to heat the Okay, and then I'm going to heat the uh, wire and we'll apply solder to it right there at the tip. And that's all there is to it. Now, at this point, I've got my rail joiners, the new Walther's 
rail joiners and you can get the number right there. And I really like these, like I said. And we'll go ahead and slide the rail joiner into place. You have to push down on the tie because the rail joiner does fit between the tie and the rail. And let's get another one over here. There it is. That one slid into place real nice. Now let's get them in here. There we go. Now we'll get them to slide together. Just push them gently and they'll fit right in there. And now you can see, if I zoom in just a little bit, I think, uh, now you can see where these rail joiners, they're evenly spaced on each side of that joint there. Nice, tight fitting joint. Okay, let's check it for alignment here. And pull that one out there like that. It looks pretty good at this point. There. Now let me get that out of the way. There. Okay, now before I mess it up, let me go ahead and solder this joiner as soon as I apply a little bit of flux. So let me get a little flux and apply it to the sides here, like so. And uh, after I finish doing the soldering, I will come back and I'll clean these with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol uh, on a uh, Q-tip or a rag or something, just to get it cleaned up. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and do the soldering real quick. It doesn't take a lot of solder. You just want to heat it up enough so that that solder is going to flow down into the joint there between the uh, rail joiner and the rails, just like that. Okay, let me get the other side back here. Okay, that looks like that's done. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this feeder in place. And we'll pull that in there. Like that. And hit it with a little heat and that'll be it. Okay, so that one's in there good and tight. So the entire yard ladder is now built. I've got feeders attached to all of my, uh, all of my turnouts, to my frogs. I have feeders attached to the inside rails that will be connecting to the yard tracks themselves. And um, that's about it for now. As soon as the liquid nails for projects uh, has uh, set up and all of the foam sheets are solidly in place, We'll go ahead and move this over there and uh, I will uh, spread out a layer of the uh, adhesive uh, into that red area that I drew outlining the ladder and we'll drop the ladder in place. Now one thing to remember when you're doing that, uh, I always mark off the location of the uh, points and I leave that area free of adhesive so that when you put it down, you're not going to glue your throw bar into place. So be careful about doing that. Otherwise, it's very straightforward. You just put down a layer of, of adhesive, spread it out with a putty knife, and you're ready to go. So we'll do that uh, as soon as everything is finished setting up, now that the yard ladder is built. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you picked up some new tips for preparing your turnouts uh, for installation on your layout and soldering them together to, uh, uh, to make up a yard ladder or just soldering your turnouts to the other track on your model railroad. So that's it for today. Uh, next we will go ahead and install the yard ladder, get it in, get some wiring done, and we'll go ahead and install the, uh, the Cobalt IP Digital switch machines 
that I'm going to be using down here in the yard. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.